title of this lecture is The Garden of Eden, Part 2, Genesis, Paleontology, Geology, and History. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the description of the, the Garden of Eden was just uh, uh, given, and, uh, and it's very instrumental. Um, now we, uh, we read through it in the, last, uh, in the last lecture, but in this lecture, I just wanted to point your, uh, to your attention, uh, associations. The, the name of the river of the Pishon is associated with the land of Havilah. Uh, the river of the Gihon, uh, river Gihon is associated with the land of Cush. And the, uh, the river Hedekel is associated going east of Ashur, uh, the ancient capital of Assyria. Um, next slide, please. And as we discussed last lecture, two rivers, the Perat and Hidekel, are pretty straightforward. The Perat refers to the Euphrates River. Uh, it's mentioned 18 times after the, the initial description in, uh, uh, when we were discussing the Garden of Eden, or in Genesis 2. And in the Akkadian, uh, the Euphrates was the Puratu, and in Sumerian, the Buranun. The Hidekel is also very well known, uh, and it's mentioned in Daniel 10.4, uh, where the prophet uh, receives a vision as he's standing on the banks of the Hidekel. Uh, the Hidekel is also described in uh, Genesis, uh, in chapter 2, as, as going east of Ashur. And uh, next slide, please. When you see the, uh, the, the two rivers, here's a, a satellite map, you can see the location. Euphrates, it's, uh, it's mentioned all over the text in Mesopotamia, in Egypt, in the Bible. Um, it's uh, the, the Perat and the Euphrates, uh, the, the Perat still, still has the etymological root, or the, the, the word is very similar to the Euphrates today, and uh, it originates in the Gulf and uh, goes through the, the, the modern uh, land of Iraq, and it uh, originates in southeastern part of Turkey. Also, uh, remember what we were just discussing, that the uh, Hidekel was the one going east of Ashur. Ashur is the ancient capital of the Syrian Empire. And as I mentioned last lecture, even though that the Syrian kings moved their uh, uh, um, capital to Nineveh, they still had, they always mentioned that they were providing the temples of Ashur, kind of the birthplace of their uh, uh, nation with, uh, with uh, gold and adorning it with precious stones. So, uh, and you can see here that the Hidekel, or the Tigris, is going, it's a mile east uh, uh, of Ashur, uh, the, the ancient capital of the Assyrian Empire. Next slide, please. Then we talked about the Pishon, and the Pishon is only mentioned in the, the Garden of Eden account, and then afterwards disappears from the Bible. It's not mentioned again. But what is mentioned is there the correlation between the Pishon and the, the land of Havilah. And when you look at the, the land of Havilah, you can deduce where the Pishon is located. There's, we discuss several uh, very clear references. The first is in Genesis 25, 18, where Ishmael, uh, the, the sons of Ishmael, extend in the line, live in a line from Ashur to Havilah. And we know Shur, uh, Shur is, uh, or the, the wilderness of Shur, is right next to Egypt in the north uh, western part of the Sinai Peninsula because of the, of the constant reference to al Pine Mizraim, on the face of Egypt. Uh, we also have the, the same reference, uh, Eshar al Pine Mizraim, uh, in 1 Samuel 15, uh, 7, where King Saul is moving down with the children of Israel and, the cho and Judah, the tribes of Judah, down, and then he's moving to the, to the west to attack the, the people of Amalek. Um, and uh, uh, so in order to move down and then east, he has to go through the northwestern part of the Sinai Peninsula. Then King Saul makes another very telltale, and we talked about this in the last lecture, uh, he warns the Kenites, you know, go depart, go out from the midst of Amalek, lest I destroy you with them. And the Kenites are located uh, in the northwestern part of the Sinai Peninsula.